As the world struggles with the challenge of reducing greenhouse gas emissions, the use of hydrogen as a clean and sustainable fuel source has gained significant attention. The idea is simple. Hydrogen is an energy carrier that can be used to generate electricity, with the only byproduct being water. In theory, it seems like an ideal solution to make transportation environmentally friendly and provide a backup for intermittent energy sources like solar and wind. However, the question remains, how sustainable is hydrogen? Hydrogen fuel cells operate by combining hydrogen and oxygen to produce electricity, emitting only water vapor. This makes hydrogen a highly attractive alternative to fossil fuels, which release significant amounts of carbon dioxide and other harmful pollutants into the atmosphere. However, the production of hydrogen itself is not entirely clean. Currently, most of the hydrogen is produced using fossil fuels like natural gas, which releases greenhouse gases during the production process. To be truly sustainable, hydrogen must be produced using renewable energy sources like solar, wind, or hydropower. While this technology exists, it is currently not widely adopted due to high costs. The most common method of producing hydrogen is through a process called steam methane reforming (SMR), which uses natural gas as the feedstock. This process is commonly used in large-scale industrial applications to produce the hydrogen needed for various processes, including refining petroleum, producing ammonia, and synthesizing methanol. The process involves three main steps. First, natural gas and steam are heated to a high temperature in the presence of a catalyst. This causes the natural gas to react with steam, producing hydrogen gas, carbon dioxide, and carbon monoxide. The second step involves separating the hydrogen gas from the other gases produced in the reaction. Finally, the carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide byproducts can be captured and stored or used in other industrial processes. This process releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, defeating the purpose of using hydrogen as a clean fuel. There are other methods of producing hydrogen that doesn't rely on fossil fuels, such as electrolysis. Electrolysis is a process used to produce hydrogen gas by splitting water molecules into their parts, hydrogen and oxygen. The process involves passing an electric current through water, which causes the water molecules to break apart into their constituent atoms. In the simplest form of electrolysis, a container of water is equipped with two electrodes, a positively charged anode, and a negatively charged cathode. When an electric current is applied to the electrodes, hydrogen gas is produced at the cathode, while oxygen gas is produced at the anode. The two gases can then be collected and stored separately. Electrolysis is a versatile method for producing hydrogen gas, as it can be powered by a variety of energy sources, including renewable sources such as solar and wind power. One challenge with electrolysis is the high energy input required to break the strong bonds between hydrogen and oxygen atoms in water molecules. As a result, electrolysis is generally less efficient than other methods. One potential advantage of electrolysis is that it can be used to produce hydrogen on demand if a source of electricity is available. This could make it a valuable technology for applications such as fuel cell vehicles, where the ability to produce hydrogen on site and on demand could be a significant advantage. Another concern with hydrogen fuel cells is their reliance on rare metals like platinum and iridium. These metals are critical components in the construction of fuel cells they are used as catalysts to facilitate the reaction. Platinum and iridium are two of the planet's most valuable and rare metals. They are used extensively in a range of industrial applications, from electronics and jewelry to automotive and aerospace industries. Both metals are commonly found in association with other metals such as nickel and copper and are typically extracted through mining. In terms of quantity, platinum and iridium are some of the rarest metals on Earth. It is estimated that the total global reserves of platinum are around 80,000 metric tons, while iridium reserves are even smaller, at around 1,500 metric tons. This makes both metals highly valuable and in high demand, particularly in industries such as automotive, where they are used in catalytic converters to reduce emissions. In terms of environmental risk, platinum and iridium extraction can significantly impact the environment. Mining operations can cause soil erosion, deforestation, and pollution of water sources. Additionally, the chemicals used in the extraction process can be toxic and harmful to wildlife and local communities. There is also the risk of oil spills and other accidents during transportation. 
The amount of rock that needs to be mined to obtain a minimum quantity of platinum and iridium varies depending on the grade of the ore deposit and the efficiency of the extraction process. Platinum and iridium are found in low concentrations within the Earth's crust, and large quantities of rock must be processed to extract even small amounts of these metals. To give some context, it is estimated that approximately 10 tons of ore must be processed to produce just 1 ounce grams, of platinum. This means that a significant amount of rock must be mined to obtain even a small quantity of platinum. Similarly, iridium is typically found in association with platinum, and is even rarer, with smaller quantities of the metal found within the ore. We must consider that a typical proton exchange membrane PEM, fuel cell may use between 0.1 to 0.5 grams of platinum per kilowatt of power output. This means that a fuel cell with a power output of 100 kilowatts would require between 10 to 50 grams of platinum, that's mean up to 20 tons of rock to process for only one battery. Other types of fuel cells may use different amounts of platinum or other catalyst materials. For instance, solid oxide fuel cells SOFCs, generally require less platinum than PEM fuel cells, but they use other rare and expensive materials. The process of extracting platinum and iridium typically involves several steps, including mining, crushing, grinding, and smelting. The ore is usually first mined using conventional mining methods, such as open pit mining or underground mining. The rock is then crushed and ground to a fine powder, and chemicals are added to extract the metals. The resulting mixture is then smelted to produce a final product. The availability of platinum and iridium varies depending on the country. Most of the world's platinum reserves are in South Africa, with smaller deposits found in Russia and Zimbabwe. Iridium is typically found in association with platinum and is also found in smaller quantities in other countries such as Canada and the United States. There are ongoing efforts to develop more sustainable methods for extracting platinum and iridium, including recycling, and using alternative sources such as urban mining, which involves extracting the metals from recycled electronics and other waste products. These methods can reduce the environmental impact of extraction, while also helping to meet the growing demand for these valuable metals. This raises questions about the sustainability and scalability of hydrogen fuel cell technology. Researchers are exploring alternatives to these rare metals, such as using cheaper metals like cobalt or nickel or even replacing them with organic molecules. Additionally, the disposal of fuel cell components can lead to environmental contamination if not handled properly. Storing and transporting hydrogen also imply challenges that must be considered. Hydrogen has a low energy density, which means that it takes up a lot of space compared to fossil fuels. It also tends to leak, which can be dangerous. To transport hydrogen, it needs to be compressed or liquefied, which requires energy and can cause the tanks to become brittle over time. When considering the environmental impact of hydrogen, it's important to consider the entire life cycle of the fuel, from production to disposal. While the use of hydrogen itself emits only water vapor, the production process and transportation of the fuel can contribute to greenhouse gas emissions. According to a report by the Hydrogen Council, an industry-led initiative, hydrogen could provide up to 18% of the world's final energy demand by 2050, with demand reaching around 500 to 600 million tons of hydrogen per year. This represents a significant increase from the current global hydrogen production of around 70 million tons per year. Despite these challenges, the use of hydrogen as a clean and sustainable fuel source shows promise. The potential to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and dependency on fossil fuels makes hydrogen an attractive alternative. However, there are still significant technological and logistical hurdles to overcome to make hydrogen a truly sustainable solution.